I want to welcome y'all to Yavin Base Broadcast, where we're in the jungle and we're ready to rumble. I can't believe what George Lucas did. I can't believe he's backing Bob Iger against Nelson Peltz. He betrayed us. And the media's calling Nelson Peltz an activist, investor, an activist, a member of the Republican Party. He's not an activist. I guess I don't realize that activist investor is a financial and trading term. After all the goodwill that Disney gave us in the form of Mando, it's all gone now with George supporting Disney. After all he's done to make us think he's on our side, George Lucas sucks and he's stupid. I can't believe he did it. I'm not qualified to mow George Lucas's lawn, but I think he's stupid and he sucks. Star Wars is dead. Wasn't dead when they sold it to Disney. Wasn't dead when they discanonized the expanded universe. It wasn't dead when The Last Jedi came out because Mando came out after that. But it's dead now. And I'm done with Star Wars, guys. Y'all gonna go see the movies in the theater in May? I think I will. This is your boy Chef. On the Yavin Bass Broadcast. <laughs> oh, run that and buy me again. USA. A lot of people make jokes about spacing somebody, about shoving somebody out an airlock. I don't think it's funny. <laughs> Out of any town, USA, by way of Stockton, California, he is the culture war realist, rational individualist, the alpha with nostalgia. He's the hierarchy dominator, the USA crusader. He is the chief executive spacer. Yo, you think you got enough names? Patience, Dad. Almost done. He is the man behind the United Spacers Alliance. Yeah! Howdy, spacers. I know the Lord of the Core. I storage in the origin. I know the record like a tech nerd. I've got the hot takes for the bot fakes. And most importantly, I am never a victim. And I am the wrangler from the outer reaches. We're here tonight. It's Friday. It is the spacing. Share the link on all platforms. Hit the like button. If you're watching on replay, thank you very much. Let's see who we have with us tonight. The chat is quite active. I love to see it. Silver Ogre showing up first. Early answer that will get erased, and it didn't. You lucked out this time, buddy. Money, Tim, money. Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into the George Lucas news and drama. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. Melissa Lord, first ever member at a channel in the house. Stizo for life. Member of the channel in the house saying howdy. Because guess what, guys? We say howdy here. Corey Cochran, the music sharing man, is in the house. Gordon McDonald, member of the channel, saying howdy. The Fractured Filter, the Replay Man, 
stopping by to say hi. All around Arbiter is in the house. Darth Ghostface, top tier member of the channel, in the house. Real Kim Shady, longtime member of the channel at this point, is here early. Off work tonight. He's here live for the spacing. Mike Cassius. Any shills want to put out an airlock? Well, you know, we have some candidates. Uh, it's going to be tough this week. I haven't even decided yet, but we are going to space at least one person. O3 Gorilla in the house. You mean USA is a musical genius, even though I don't sing very well. OG Star Wars top tier member of the channel, mod and longtime friend. Let's get it started. Ho, ho. Got some MC Hammer for you there. Justin, the Star Wars marble purist. Member of the channel in the house. Hit the like button like he says. Jack of all casuals. Down since the beginning. Going to watch the replay. Thanks for swinging by buddy. Appreciate you. Steven Salcedo's film and gaming blogosphere. Showing up tonight. Dan Blackroyd aka Liquid Blake. Showing support for the Banjo Boys. Love when we have them on. Longtime friends and some of my favorite guests on the channel. King Chris, member of the channel. And Knight of Melvin in the house. Meteor Advocate Timon. Long time, long time member at this point. Showing up tonight from Brazil. Darth Prime is with us. It's always the hillb hillbilly edition, buddy. Always. E. Clay Thomason, longtime supporter and member of the channel. Showing up. What's going on, E. Clay? That's it, USA. USA, bye bye. Stockton, slap them, beta, soycock, Disney lovers. Yeah. Imagine being a Star Wars fan in Stockton like I was. Pretty wild. There are the custom emojis, and yes, we will have Expanded Bootyverse tonight. If you want to use those custom emojis, join the channel. Check out the perks and join up. Tehalim29 is with us. Well, thanks for that view. Appreciate that. All right. I don't think I missed anyone. If I did, it was by no means intentional. We have a lot to talk about tonight. I mean, a lot to talk about. So it's pretty much all Star Wars news tonight until the end, until the segments. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to Get in. This is basically it right here, right? And coincidentally, they're putting out a blue milk product. But uh, they're trying to get you to spend money on them. We're going to take a deep dive in a few weeks here in the movie releases. We did talk about it last week. Before it was official, there was that rumor out there about the saga, including the fake Disney part of the saga, being released in May. But we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. But they are trying to force feed you this stuff, guys. Whether it's parks, shows you like, um, 
retro games being remastered and re-released, whatever it is, they're trying to get you to spend money on them. Um, so we're going to talk about the George Lucas news. We're going to talk about... Let's just flip over here. Some Leslie Headland news and the Acolyte. Uh, Bleacher Report. Kind of an attack on Star Wars fans. Just a really stupid article. And another example of, oh, it's a based website. Like, we like Bleacher Report. Wait until I show you what they said. And we're going to expose some frauds again. But the biggest topic will be the George Lucas news, guys. So, I don't know, if you want some blue milk, it apparently is available, but, uh, I don't know, I would, we used to just get food coloring and do it that way. We used to just get the food coloring and do it that way. Yeah, the remastered Jedi Academy. Nice, see, that's what they do, they revise it, they take any chance they can to put their own touch on it and slowly alter the lore, the established lore. Well, yeah, he's, he's one of the frauds for sure. Just one of many, one of many guys. And, you know, on this channel right here, if you want to criticize someone, including me, then do it. I don't care who it is. Or, you know, we, we don't, that's the thing. We don't appeal to groups. I look at individuals, right? And even with individuals, I look at each argument they make. You've got the shills out there, like the, the Jacobs and the Mesa Windus that are just universally shit. But there are some other accounts out there that maybe they have like 80% good takes, 20% shit takes. I can deal with those on a one-on-one, -on -one, one-off basis, right? But not, not the shill accounts. But some people just think that, oh man, this account has 100% good takes. I love this channel. Don't even do that with me. And I'm sure you guys don't. If you disagree with something, then let's talk about it. I probably won't wind up agreeing with you, but we can talk about it. I don't care who it is. If you hear a shit take, bring it up in the chat. Even if it's you think it's somebody that you know we're friends with or whatever. It's fine. Don't care. Let's just be adults. And if you're a man, let's be a man about it. Like We can have conversations and we can talk criticism. Um... Josef Levi, time to hit the alternative factory. That's exactly it. And we'll do that later because we want to provide alternatives so we don't have to watch new shit or even bad old shit. Yeah, these types of guys, like those you can pretty much rely on to have shit takes, but people like on our side are going to have shit takes. So call it out. A shit takes a shit take. Yeah, exactly. You can just make some blueberry cereal and you'll wind up with uh, blue milk at the end. There were some shit takes there. You know, I mean, there just, there were. And hey, you know, I think personally, I think Anne is fine. I was on her channel like three and a half years ago. It was fun. I know she's good friends with uh, good friends of mine, but doesn't mean 100% of her takes are good. So it is what it is. And, you know, my take on this when I get to it will be probably something that you haven't heard yet. So we'll get to it. Um, let's see what we've got here that we can knock off really quick. Man, there really isn't a lot of small stuff, but let's get into this first because everyone has been talking about this and we're not going to do like a trailer review because 
I could give a shit less about the Acolyte. could care less about it. We know, we've known for four years what it's going to be. They've told us, they've admitted it, what it's going to be. But let's see this interview here. StarWars.com itself interviewing her. Whatever you think the Acolyte is, it's not. That's the biggest quote from her on this. Uh, I read this last night. Because this article is, this interview is from about three days ago, it looks like, by Kristen Biver. Oh, Kristen Biver. The weirdo. See, they have all these spoiler things here. Like, everything's a spoiler. Oh, you can't spoil it. Because then people won't want to watch it, right? i got to get to the quotes from her. Here it is. Set during the era of the High Republic. Oh, no, I spoiled it for you, spacers. We'll begin to unravel how an esteemed organization like the Jedi Order could be in its golden age and also on the cusp of the chaos that unfolds in the Skywalker saga. If Star Wars is about the underdog versus the institution and the acolyte, the Jedi are the institution. No, that's that's the distinction there. Star Wars is not about the underdog versus the institution. It is about an underdog against an institution. But guess what? The underdog is a rebel alliance against a tyrannical empire. In this case, the underdog is apparently dark side users versus the Jedi Order as the institution. That's not what Star Wars is about. Underdog versus the institution does fit the mold of Rebel Alliance versus Empire. But it doesn't mean that every underdog versus every institution is what Star Wars is about. Again, we're actually going to get into this because connected to the George Lucas story, I have a quote from him on this. It's about resisting against tyranny not the same thing this is yet another postmodernist let's challenge establishments let's challenge institutions let's challenge tradition that's what this is about she continues i was so interested in a storyline where the jedi were at the height of their power and i don't mean the fa- I don't mean the Phantom Menace, because at that point, there's a Sith Lord in the Senate, and they're not picking up on, that they're not picking up on. Hedlin wanted to explore further back when seeing a Sith seemed as likely as encountering a Velociraptor. But, because don't forget, guys, there are dinosaurs in Star Wars. Remember? Remember the whiteboard from way back in 2020? Like, it's a thing I've heard of, but it's not a thing that you would ever consider you'd be interacting with. With a darker tone focusing on the duality that exists beyond the simplistic black and white view of good versus evil, the Acolyte asks a key question before the fall of the Jedi. What went wrong? And if the bad guys are actually the underdog, it just seemed like a cool reversal. Again, postmodernist storytelling. Let's take the side of the bad guys, and yeah, that's... That's what Star Wars is. I wouldn't call it simplistic. But it is a black and white view of good versus evil. That's what George has said. That's what George created in the depressing 1970s. From the late 60s through the late 70s, you had all these depressing movies, right? Until Star Wars came out. And that's one of the reasons it was so successful. Because people were desperate for something uplifting and 
to get a good feeling from. And they got that out of Star Wars. Legends and other lore. Beyond the other film influences, Hedlund has infused her love of the original films, current books, and Legends lore into the story. There were certain things that I really wanted to do. You'll see a half Thelen, half human Jedi, played by Daphne Keene, which was always a dream of mine. Wow, so I guess she saw uh, Rystal in the special edition Return of the Jedi, and she fell into lesbian love with her, apparently, and she wanted to make her fan fiction character reality. So that has happened. There's also some EU lore that I decided to put in because I thought it was so cool and no one told me I couldn't. Well, I mean, come on, look at Filoni. Look at how many things he's appropriated and bastardized out of the expanded universe because that's all they can do. They wanted to discard it, yet they still use it all the time because they're uncreative hacks and they're acknowledging its greatness when they do that. But in doing so, they destroy it. There are a couple of really big EU ideas that are utilized both early on in the series and later on, later in the series. Okay. Okay, no one cares. Talking about the trailer. So, you know, again... Par for the course, they're coming out and admitting what the show is. Here's another interview. This is with... Let me see if they're the ones who did it. IGN is the one that sat down with her. Here it is. Obviously, a lot of our Coruscant stuff is prequel-based. It was a challenge, but we wanted to utilize practical sets for Coruscant. And that, me that meditation room that you see, we wanted to do it justice, but also have it feel real and tactile. Definitely the large amount of Jedi you see in the trailer, I think, is very reminiscent of the prequel trilogy, though we don't have any Attack of the Clones level scenes. But also, the Clone Wars, inspired by the Acolyte, inspired the Acolyte, a lot being inspired by Night Sisters. We didn't have any Night Sisters in this show, but being inspired by them, being inspired by Asajj Ventress. My favorite episode is The Wrong Jedi. I definitely took some inspiration from that. We kind of ran the gambit. Let's reference Return of the Jedi here. Let's reference this holding cell based on the Clone Wars episode here. Let's have a cantina because I've always wanted one. I think when you get an opportunity to do a Star Wars to do a Star Wars. She said this before, like it's a singular noun, and you're a Star Wars fan. The idea is to get uh, in a lot of your wish list, and hopefully other people are excited by it too. I think there's absolutely room for it to grow. I think that especially nowadays, I'm just the kind of person there where I wanna make sure a season feels like it's a legitimately whole story, and I definitely pepper in a lot of like, here's how it could go this way, it could go that way. I also don't want to leave the audience hanging emotionally. I want to leave them hanging narratively, but emotionally. I want them to feel like they've watched a whole thing and then still have a bunch of questions at the end like, wait, now that I've learned this relationship exists, what's going to happen with those people? And now that this person has this type of power, what are we going to do about that? So I, I think it can definitely have some of that. She's, she's trying to make this one of these modern streaming shows. You know, Breaking Bad and... I don't know. It wasn't a streaming show. It was on, a, it was on AMC. But, you know, these modern shows with the serialized art type stuff. That's what they're going for here set in the Star Wars universe because she likes the sights and sounds of Star Wars as a normie fake fan. And they're trying to use that model of, I don't know, Sons of Anarchy and uh, what, what else? 
what are some of the other shows over the last 15 years that have come out, guys? You know, with the episode by episode ongoing arc storyline. That's what they're trying to do here. And then they go into the diversity. So that's what I would say about the diversity of the cast. Mostly they were people that were essentially my first choice. I wrote this part that Charlie Barnett played, who I worked with on Russian Doll. This doesn't give too much away about the character, but he's such an A-plus student. He's like an A-plus Jedi, and that's Charlie in real life. He's such a good actor, and he just wants to be really good. Blah, blah, blah. So that's what she said there. And this is from Entertainment Weekly. She's all over the place. Acolyte creator breaks down the first trailer for her underdog sis story. But before we get to that, looks like, once again, Stizo for Life has gifted five USA memberships. Let's see who the lucky recipients are. Zacharot 315, Decrepit, Jordan Francais, Boothrakauer, and Kramer. One, two, three, four, five. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you, Stizo, for doing that. We got to play something for that. As I take a sip of beer here. How about this? How about towing the line? I dare you to step over this line. Okay, I'm a stepping. I dare you to step over this one. This one. This one. <laughs> Thanks again, Stizo. Appreciate that. Uh, Blue-eyed Scorpio is in the house. Fuck Norris, long-time member of the channel. Joey Peeper is here. Making sure I didn't miss any newcomers. Thanks for being here, guys. So again, this is the Entertainment Weekly interview. Uh, I really wanted to tell a story about the Sith, explains Hedlund, best known for creating the Netflix hit Russian Doll. That was kind of my dream Star Wars idea, but it felt like the time period to do that in would be something pre-Phantom Menace. That seemed to be the most interesting trajectory for the Sith. How did the Sith go from rule of two and being quote-unquote extinct to Palpatine coming into power Without the Jedi knowing about it. Um, yeah. Is there a book we can read about that, Chad? Is there a book we can read that would tell us how Palpatine came to power? And when I say power, I don't mean Chancellor. Obviously, we can watch The Phantom Menace. I'm talking about come to power as a Sith. Is there a book? I think there's a book out there, isn't there, guys? Does anyone know what it is? I, I think there is. I just, maybe I'm remembering wrong. Maybe I'm like Leslie Headland and I'm a fake fan and a shill. And Oh, wait, yep, that was it. That was it. There it is. Exactly. You haven't read it yet. It's, it's good. Um, I don't think it's as great as some people make it out to be. Parts of it are fantastic, but parts of it uh, leave much to be desired. But definitely, you know, in the top tier, for sure, when you look at, if you break all the expanded universe material into, into thirds, it's in the top third, for sure. You've seen The Phantom Menace. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Red Hoodwinked is with us. Uh, let's see here. If the Jedi are this benevolent institution at this point, then anyone who opposes them would be the underdog. Again, like, this is forced. Trying to sell the Jedi as the institution, like I said earlier, like they're the Empire. And again, Yoda himself says, you know, we made mistakes and all this stuff, but it doesn't mean... They're an evil empire. I I don't understand this. Like, if you wanted to tell some kind of story, right? And I'm just 
it's hard for me to come at it from this angle because I'm a real Star Wars fan and expanded universe fan. But if I'm pulled into this and it's like, hey, tell a story before the Phantom Menace, it's not going to be about the Sith because what did they say? In the prequels about the Sith. Hadn't heard from him in for a millennia, right? So how is how is this even gonna work? So many other ways you could have told a story. I don't think there was anything else really interesting. Yeah, she says this again. I think with Star Wars, it always starts with some sort of underdog versus the institutional threat. Or it's fraught, or it's a fraught familial issue that needs to be resolved. I think both of those appear in the show just in ways that are turned on their head. And don't forget, Intimacy Coordinator. I don't think they need that for a kiss, guys. I don't think they need an intimacy coordinator for a kiss. Let's see what you guys are seeing here. Modern story in Tuscan Bob is in the house. Modern storytelling dictates that if the protagonist is not flawless, then, not then, the antagonist is justified. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good point. Joseph Burton, member of the channel, says there was a lot of internal issues going on with Lucasfilm starting in 2008 and carrying on through to where Lucasfilm is now. I've got some interesting info to share with you. Then send it to me. Sounds interesting. O3 Gorilla says Jedi are lawful, neutral, with good tendencies. Yeah. I don't disagree with that class. Leslie Deadland, Deadhead. Yeah, get it right, man. Get it right. So, you know, it's there's nothing really new here. They told us from the start what this would be. They tell us from the start what all of this will be, right? And we've already started covering this like a couple of weeks ago with Around the Galaxy. The preemptive gaslighting. The preemptive strikes on uh, race baiting and all that stuff. It's it's coming big time. Get it right. It's grammar fascist. Not Nazi. Uh, Let's check this out right here. Bleacher Report. Hey, man. Good website, right? It's Bleacher Report. I don't know why they're writing about this. Or not Bleacher Report. Golly. Barstool Sports. Not Bleacher Report. I apologize. Barstool Sports. Have Star Wars fans turned into assholes? Maybe Disney Star Wars fans. But that's not what Chris... Castellani says here. So the trailer dropped the other day for the new Star Wars series, and it's riddled with dislikes all across various platforms. The ratio, right guys? It currently has 154,000 likes and an insane 256,000 dislikes. As someone who's been pretty open about the fact that Star Wars isn't his thing anymore, I wish I could still connect with it. I wish Star Wars fans put out better product. I wish Star Wars put out better products. It should be a world worth revisiting, yet they continually let me down. One thing that I always hear is that nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans. That is true to a certain extent, and I'll explain why later. But we need to answer the question, are Star Wars fans just assholes? First, we need to define the word asshole. Derives from the Latin word asasa and the Greek word holanda. Oh my gosh. By definition, it means you're a dickhead who hates everything. I feel like I'm setting myself up for backlash with the title of this blog, and that's fine. Well, you're getting it now, pal. 
you got to hook the reader in somehow. It's a gross generalization to say that every member of a fan base is an asshole. There are, well, that's the thing though. There isn't a fan base. It's probably broken into four or five different bases here. You take the Jacobs and the Sawyerisms and all that. That's like your Disney Star Wars fan, your Disney Star Wars shill, right? Real fans, a pre-2012, pre-2014, whatever you want to call it, totally different set. And that's what's embarrassing right now about being a Star Wars fan because, you know, your relatives, they think, well, gosh, you know, Tim's a Star Wars fan. So they see something on TV, a commercial or whatever, and they think that you like that. And you have to explain, no, you see, that's like the new stuff that I don't like. It it sucks having to explain that to people. you got to hook the reader in somehow. It's a gross generalization, blah, blah, blah. I already read that. Suppose you're one of those people who attacked Kelly Marie Tran. So there it is. He's already assuming. He's making one of those false assumptions, right? Reading that this happened, that we've debunked time and time again. He's assuming that really happened and he's white knighting for Kelly Marie Tran. And forced her off of social media or harassed Jake Lloyd for his performance. Dude, when was this, when was this written? Yesterday, did he not see the article where the mother debunked that herself? This is Barstool Sports, right? And they're allowing this tripe to be published, unresearched and idiotic. It's almost like this is a parody article. These people are idiots. I don't care who it is, if it's the Screen Rants, or people on our side, like Barstool Sports, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. When he was growing up, in that case, that's just you being an insecure person and a bad fan. I know nothing in the world we can agree on unanimously. Still, I think most people will agree that if you're taking a fiction series and using its lack of, lack of quality to attack individuals on a personal level, then you're fucked in the head. So what about this? What about when Disney Lucasfilm comes out and says, hey, uh, you better get ready because fans are racist and um, they're going to attack you a week before the show debuts. Kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Because that did happen. What about when... The customer is treated that way. Star Wars is to Star Wars fans what the Detroit Tigers are to me. And he makes a really shitty comparison here. I remember reading this part. Uh, I rewatched the sequel trilogy, or the Disney trilogy as we call it, just the other week. And while I still do like The Force Awakens. The last two films are bad films. Maybe you like them and that's fine. No, it isn't. But you can't tell me that many of the complaints aren't completely justified. Saying that you like Star Wars, but wish they would construct tighter narratives is no different than saying you like your favorite team, but wish they fielded a better one. We live in an age where we've seen some pretty satisfying blockbuster film epics. White Star Wars or I'm sorry, while Star Wars is definitely epic in scale, the stories have been underwhelming at best. Since when? Like, what movies are you talking about? Regarding The Acolyte, I don't know if I'll watch the show. I really enjoyed the first two seasons of The Mandalorian. Up, oh, so he's one of those, right? He's one of those that hate the sequels, but like The Mandalorian, even though, guess what, guys? All roads lead to Jake Skywalker. But besides that, there hasn't been a whole lot that Star Wars has featured on television that has changed my mind about the fact that I think it's a universe that works better on the big screen. Wait a minute, you're criticizing Disney plus Star Wars? Sounds like you're being a bad fan. People acted in those shows. And you're criticizing them. You're being toxic. 
Having watched this trailer, I can say nothing in it is objectionable and warrants a thrashing. In this particular instance, I think people are just hating to hate because they're disappointed with the direction the universe is going in, which I understand. But I've seen trailers in the past, the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot, standing out right away, that seemed to go out of their way to piss off the fans. Well, the mere existence of the show pisses off the fans. This time, four years ago, March 2020, I remember Ryan and everyone else talking about the news coming out. You know, the female-centric series. And they told us, like I said earlier, what this show was going to be about. So the mere existence of the show, and it's not a sizzle reel, it really is a show, fraudster is an affront to Star Wars and pisses off the fans. This is like one of the worst takes I've ever seen. Worse than Screen Rant in many ways. Or at least as bad as. I didn't get that out of this trailer, but I feel like fans believe that they're sending a message in some way. I just hope that those same fans give the show, before speaking about how they feel about it, give the show a chance, I guess he meant, or they could just do what I do, don't watch and don't comment on it. Oh, we're going to comment on it, all right. So this cuck right here made a video on, uh, you know, bad Star Wars fans. And then come to find out he's got this channel where they review stuff, right? And uh, not sure if you can see this really great, but he's got like the hot wife and stuff. Probably has Tyrone come over and uh, nail her as he sits on the stool in the corner. Look at all this. I mean, I don't understand this obsession with watching people watch stuff. That's like the last thing I ever want to watch. So he made this stupid video. If we, I'm not going to watch it here, but if I click on it. Li listen to this guy. Oh, you can't hear it, but he's like, hello everyone, I'm a cuck. I love Star Wars. But I don't like Star Wars fans. We don't care what you like. Fuck you. You know what he looks like? He looks like the non hair lip version of fake Kyle Katarn. Am I wrong on that? Tell me I'm wrong on that. Wait, wait what did you say? His son is mixed race. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Um, to go on with this article. I hope that one day we get a Star Wars product that comes along with a real vision that puts Star Wars back where it was when the original trilogy existed. So you got a prequel hater on our hands here. Yet he thought Mandalorian was good. Fake fan. I don't know what else this guy writes about. At Barstool Sports. Oh, his profile doesn't even exist. It's probably him right there. What a just garbage take. This, it was incoherent, didn't make any sense. But hey, it's Barstool, guys. We're supposed to be friends with Barstool Sports. Great value version. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he is authentic. He does look like him. Thanks for agreeing with me. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. We proved our point back in 2020 with Mandalorian Season 2. We had fun doing it. And uh, at some point you're like, okay, you know, we've, we've made the point that Regardless of what it is, Disney Star Wars content sucks. And it was fun. It's time to move on and just start bagging on it in other ways and seeing the real world implications of it. O3 Gorilla, yeah, they do sniff their own farts. And other people do as well. Um...
What is going on here? Let me look over here. Oh, Von Room is in the house. Uh, Kyle Queertarn. That's a good one. Hadn't heard that one yet. If I did, I missed it. Uh... Oh, Melvin's in the house. What's going on, Melvin? Yeah, this guy's binging Jacob's fake wife. Someone has to. Anyway, Barstool Sports is stupid, and so is Holden and Jen Hardman. <laughs> I didn't even notice the last name. <laughs> Hardman is probably like her, her boyfriend's name, right? Hardman. Not Hardman, it's Hardman. Guess what his superpower is. Preston's in the house. Real Kim Shady says, Nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Is all thanks to the people versus George Lucas and people like Hello Garrido. Yeah, what a garbage tier account. We covered him about two years ago. That was a fun stream. Yeah, me too. I've been gatekeeping, you know, since like I was five or six years old. Once I realized there were fake fans just, you know, trying to capitalize on the nerddom and stuff. It's like, no, you're not allowed to play Star Wars with us on the playground. Get out of here. Hello, Greedo is just, we've covered it. We all know that. Thought they closed down. No, they're, they're still around, man. Soul Assassin's here. What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? Gatekeeping is good. Gatekeeping is great. Protect the lore. The lore is sacred. All right, guys. Let's get into this because I've been seeing nothing but garbage takes on the George Lucas story. Uh... Shit, I thought I had that pulled up. Let's find the quote here. George Lucas statement. So basically what this statement was, guys, he released it to several media outlets. Everyone was like, oh, where's the original statement? Well, what he did was, or... Whoever did it for him, they just kind of released that to several media outlets. Because if you read the articles, they say as revealed to Yahoo News or to whatever, you know. Uh, this is what he said. Because he just sent this letter to several of them. This is what the letter said. And then we'll give you context and I'll give you my take on it. Creating magic. And that's... That's a Disney term, right? It's not George's term, creating magic. You know, that's one of their taglines or whatever is not for amateurs. And what is an amateur? An amateur, you can define that many other ways, but really in the strictest sense, an amateur is someone who doesn't get paid, right? Amateur athletes, like in college and stuff. A pro, professional, that's their profession, so they do get paid. It can also mean somebody who isn't highly skilled. You're an amateur. You can use it that way colloquially. When I sold Lucasfilm, 
just over a decade ago, I was delighted to become a Disney shareholder. So become one. Apparently he wasn't one before. That's interesting. Because my longtime admiration for its iconic brand and Bob Iger's leadership. When Bob recently returned to the company during a difficult time, I was relieved. No one knows Disney better. I don't know. There could be like some Disney adults out there that uh, probably know it pretty well. I remain a significant shareholder because I have full faith and confidence in the power of Disney and Bob's track record of driving long-term value. I have voted all of my shares for Disney's 12 directors and urge other shareholders to do the same. So what you have going on here is you got this proxy fight, right? And we were one of the first people to talk about this last year, like it or not. Ike Perlmutter, who was over the the Marvel Netflix shows and stuff, uh, and Nelson Peltz, and they have that group, I don't know, three-letter acronym, triangle group, whatever it is, and they're trying to wrest control of Disney board from the existing members of the board. They want to shake up the status quo. So that's what this is in response to. And again, the former executive with an officer title that I spoke to about four months ago, it was just a coincidence, met this guy in my professional ventures. And I'm like, wait a minute here. Because I talked to him, shook his hand and ran back to him. I was in a CM for about, you know, a week or two weeks on and off at this event. But I go, hey, I need to ask you some questions. And he basically said that it would get quashed. And he's right, because now you have George backing Iger. Do I think it would make a difference? That's where we get into the fraudsters here, guys. Let me catch this super chat really quick before I start getting into that. Joseph Burton, member of the channel, for $10. United Spacers Alliance. I've coined a term for the influx of bullshit Star Wars inspired by politics. Swino, Star Wars in name only. The fans are literally swine. It's like poetry at rhymes. Space them. I like that. We may have to start using that. Swino. We need to get like a Swino emoji. Um, we need more members so we can unlock more emojis too. I like that. A sawbuck from Joseph Burton is worthy of a clip. What should we play? What should we play? Need to get some more clips too. Let's play some Carrie Fisher. He is what he is. That's the thing. He doesn't pretend to be anything else. He doesn't feel the need to be charming or anything. He's just an unpretentious, very straightforward guy. Thank you so much for the ten dollars, Joseph Burton. Very clever. Yeah, Swino. Justin likes it too. So if we have swinos, you have to ask Tuscan Bob, who is the John McCain of Star Wars fandom, the swino. Because for those who don't know, Tuscan Bob is a huge fan of John McCain and his surviving daughter, Megan. Just so you guys know. All right. So that's the statement. So here's the thing. All these grifter channels, and I'm going to call them what they are because they're full of shit, just like Doomcock was. And I gave Ryan a shout out on his 300K subscriber celebration stream earlier. And I said, you know, the Doomcock Slayer. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was, th it was two, three years ago, whatever. But it, it was important because I think that 
enabled people. It encouraged people. It, it empowered people to speak out against bullshit. And, you know, I've said this before, we could go back and find some clips, but he was dry running that on the spacing in 2021 because we were calling out all that stuff, like the Luke Skywalker stuff in early 2021 after he was on the Mandalorian and all that. So we will take credit for that, Ryan, for using the spacing as a dry run to say that on Friday night. But point is, uh, the grifters, right? They're mad. I don't care who it is. If it's WDW Pro or WDW Con, as we call them, proven wrong time and time again. And the small print, you guys, I can't read the small print. I don't know how to zoom on a computer. I'm just a, I'm just a boomer. And then, hey guys, it's it's Valiant Renegade here, and yeah, 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 yeah. That guy, like, conspiracy theory nut job, doesn't even know what he's talking about. We've proven that time and time again. Whenever we had the Gallant Raider segments, the Gallant Raider is the true box office expert. Uh, who else do you have? The Cameron Poshes. Oh, he's friends with all them, right? Until it's inconvenient. Here's what's pretty wild. I was out there watching some stuff. Uh, I don't know. Blake might have sent me this link. But Tom from Midnight's Edge, like he was 50% right when he was talking about this a couple of nights ago. And we know Tom and, you know, we kind of had a falling out about three years ago. I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think that he's, he's grifting most of the time. So it is what it is. But we had a lot of good conversations on stream and backstage about movies and all kinds of other stuff. But his take on the whole thing was probably pretty close to being right. But most of these guys are mad because this kind of makes their uh, Nelson Pelts push fall apart. Because the what these grifters do, guys, they have to give you hope. Doomcock's done it. Oh, Mandalorian is your hope. You know, uh, what else? What else is the hope? Uh, oh, yeah, George is coming back. That kind of bullshit. That's like the extreme one, but existing stuff that really has happened. Mandalorian is your is your hope there. Uh, Andor is good, right? That's your hope for more good Star Wars. Oh, Dave Filoni. The Filoni Faithful. We have a Filoni trilogy movie, whatever the hell it is, coming out. They have to have hope. Because if there's hope, there's a reason for you to tune back in, right? And for all these bullshit rumors that some fantasy where Nelson Peltz take, takes over the board and actually makes good content and stuff. Non-woke content. There's so many reasons that wouldn't happen. Even when I say wouldn't happen, the takeover part, if the takeover happened, why good content wouldn't happen? There are other forces at work there that would pre prevent it from happening. That's all there is to it. So these guys are mad that their little narrative is kind of falling apart. They don't give a shit that George came out and said this at the end of the day. Star Wars is dead. Star Wars has been dead. Since it was sold, it was made official when they discarded the Expanded Universe on 425.14 coming up on the 10-year anniversary. For two months now, I've already had my ex-post scheduled to go out on that day. We'll have to have a live stream. What day of the month is the 25th of... April next month. It's a Thursday. So yeah, that next night on the spacing, we'll have to do the 10 year anniversary of that. The point is garbage tier takes and the people they have on there are even worse. Like Paul Shadow and all these other guys. George Lucas didn't betray anyone. Here's what they're not telling you, or at least maybe they're not remembering. What about this? This is like from right after it happened. Two different articles here. You got the rap, culture slate. George Lucas apologizes for the white slavers' remarks about Disney. 
Remember the, and that's in the Disney Star Wars supercut where he calls them the white slavers and stuff. So here's what he said to apologize for it. I want to clarify my interview with, or on the Charlie Rose show. It was for the Kennedy Center Honors and conducted prior to the premiere of the film. I misspoke and used a very inappropriate analogy and for that I apologize. So I don't know if he's apologizing for saying slave stuff, you know, because it's not politically correct. Because don't forget, the only slaves in human history were from West Africa and they were in the United States. No slaves existed at any other point, including China right now, guys. Don't forget that. I have been working with Disney for 40 years and chose them as the custodians of Star Wars because of my great respect for the company and Bob Iger's leadership. Disney is doing an incredible job of taking care of and expanding the franchise. I rarely go out with, stand with statements to clarify my feelings, but I feel it is important to make it clear that I am thrilled that Disney has the franchise and is moving it in such exciting directions in film, television, and the parks. Most of all, I'm blown away with the record-breaking blockbuster success of the new movie, and I'm very proud of JJ and Kathy. So this is in 2015, guys, after the Charlie Rose interview. That says more than the statement from this week. Yet the idiot grifters, the Yavin Base broadcast, you know who they really are, and the Valiant Renegades, and and I don't know who else is out there talking all this shit. Did they even bring this up? I haven't seen where they did. This statement from 2015, clarifying the white slavers comments, says more than what he says this week. This week, it was obvious. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I'm brilliant because, you know, I'm saying that he's uh, trying to protect his stock or somebody is. Well, you know, he could sell it anytime he wants and he'd be fine. Does this man worth seven, eight billion really care? Don't know. But the point is, what he's saying here specifically about Star Wars and about the sale says more than the statement from this week. That's all there is to it. This isn't anything new, so why wasn't Star Wars dead? Echo Base Network, Valiant Renegade, WDW Con. In 2015, why wasn't it dead then? Before the Mandalorian, your sacred show came out. Your lore-breaking show for Grogu-attracted persons. 2015. And then here's something else. I'd like for one of those channels to define for me what betraying fans... And making your profile name George Lucas sucks. Like that other Muppet fucker from EBN had in his uh, headline on one of the streams. George Lucas sucks. Why, why, why didn't you do that back in 2015 when this happened? Plus, what about this statement right here? Let me pop over here and I'm not going to put it on the screen yet. I'm going to read something. As for me, I would love to pick up where I left off and continue my journey of creating and participating in storytelling, which is my utmost passion in everything I work so hard for. It has been difficult to move forward with the lies and labels stuck on me, backed and encouraged by the most powerful entertainment company in the world. I am grateful someone has come to my defense in such a powerful way and look forward to clearing my name. And Justin, this is from February 6th. And just in the last week, in fact, covered, I believe, last week on the spacing, this person talked about how much they loved the character and they loved the Disney Star Wars production they were in. Guess who it is? It's Gina Carano. So is Gina Carano a traitor? 
guys? Is she did she betray everyone because she liked Disney Star Wars, the Disney Star Wars show she was in? I mean, holy shit. I mean, this is George Lucas. No one is even qualified to mow his lawn. And I've been talking about this for a long time. You got to separate, just like when it is with fictional characters, you got to separate the character from the actor. And in this case, you got to separate what he did creatively in Star Wars with what he does in real life. Right? He had Biden at his house, as we reported a couple of weeks ago. Probably not somebody we're going to agree with politically, but he has not let that creep into his creations. Here's an example of that. Remember the whole lost control thing? Also, in a lot of our videos. In some woke little punk Seventh grader named Jeremiah needs to be belted in the face by his parents. The world has changed so much since the first Star Wars movie. How do you think the change in the fights for racial justice will impact the Star Wars universe going forward? <laughs> George Lucas responds with the following. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've kind of lost control of Star Wars. So it's going off in a, diff in a different path than what I intended. But but the first six are very much mine. In my philosophy, and I think that philosophy sort of goes beyond any particular time. And Alora and I have talked about that. It's timeless messages there. Because it's based on history, it's based on philosophy, it's based on a lot of things. And you know, the first three basically tell you how democracy turns into a dictatorship. And you end up with a tyrant, the emperor. It's very important now where we are in our political history. So that tells you right there that he slaps down this notion that racial justice and all that should be part of Star Wars storytelling. He did a good versus evil, black and white, uplifting, positive, heroic saga. That's what he wanted to do. And he didn't let politics creep into that. Just like this, if he supports Disney, who cares what the reason is? Whether it's his stock value or because he actually likes them, it doesn't matter. What he created, what we like to read and watch and talk about from the real Star Wars era, that's what matters. And I'm not one of those people clamoring for more of it because if more of it were created now, then it would be tainted by current day politics. There's no way around it. But it doesn't mean that real Star Wars is tainted because he's doing this. I don't think most of us in this chat or people that have been on my stream would agree with him politically. Like having Biden at his house and all that stuff. Oh, it's the wife making him do it. No, it isn't. He's... It's been pretty clear who he donates to and all that stuff. But again, he didn't let it affect his storytelling, his universe, his world building. He didn't let it affect that. That's what matters. Let's see what you guys are saying. You can't separate. You hate people. Don't we all, though? Don't we all? Like, I could have a whole stream about annoying people. Like the guys that ride bikes in tights out on the country road and block it. Wish I could just run them off the road. <sighs> it's difficult to separate them. Well, that's why we don't keep on expecting Acolyte and... And or and anything else to be real Star Wars because it's part of the continuity, right? It's part of the post-Disney continuity. Go back and watch my video from coming up on three years ago, how to continue and join the EU. Draw your blades. You got to compartmentalize that 
stuff. You got to vilify Disney Star Wars to the point where you don't consider it to be legitimate. Soul Assassin, history, philosophy, and culture, enemies to modern society, the woke want. Yeah. Include this in, yeah, I know. I need to get that done. The complicated politics of George Lucas. Justin brought that up on Discord, and I'm like, I just don't have the time right now, but I will get to that. But the great thing about the guy is he hasn't let it creep into the storytelling. Hey, the gatekeepers here. Howdy, spacers. Hope you're all having a good evening at the States. Thanks for being here, member of the channel. Uh, his ego is too big to think that Disney could actually make it. Yeah, I just, I don't think he cared at that point. Like, hey, I'm going to sell it to someone. I think it was a dumb decision. It's like, hey, you got kids. Did you not trust your own kids? But it is what it is because what existed before the sale is still out there and you just can't allow it to be tainted. Hey, I have a mountain bike. I just don't ride them on roads where people drive cars. <laughs> but that's my take on this, guys. Like, do I like the fact that he did that this week? No, but... What he did back in 2015 when he clarified the white slaver comments is worse. Why weren't people talking about it then and making a big deal out of it? Every other month, these channels are like they're done and it's dead. Hashtag cancel Disney Plus when Gina Carano got fired. But not next month, we're going to review WandaVision, right? We're back. We're back, bitches. It's the same old shit. If you guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you this. If you ever hear something, we could even make this a segment somehow. If you ever hear something on another channel and you're wondering how legitimate it is, then show up in the chat or I'll start doing, I need to get back to doing this, a Friday night uh, members only post and say, hey, I'm wondering about this. I heard this somewhere else. Tell me uh, if it's true or not. Then I'll tell you. Just like this whole, oh man, activist investor. They're not activists. Like you don't even know what that means, guys. You embarrass yourself by talking about stuff you don't understand. Activist investor doesn't mean like activists where I'm marching in the streets with a sign. They're trying to hostily take over a company so that they can change it whether it's regardless of what the political stance of the investors are embarrassing and i don't talk about shit i don't know about all right uh blake says the regular morons part of the fan boat fantasy tours can't help but try to spin this away from reality they have nothing else besides regular trips to Disney hotels to post online about for the cause. Yeah, and I'll post pictures from my backyard because, in my opinion, it's better than any Disney park. And just wait until I finish building the big dick. It'll be awesome. Upstairs. Yeah. EU, yep. And, you know, the EU includes, you know, like the Ewok movies. Love those movies. Lots of different stuff. All right. Um, let's knock some of these segments out, guys. I think this is an appropriate time. The Expanded University. Imaginative and boundless. So this is a book right here that Alora picked up recently. And I'm like, man, 
if I had been on schedule, I would have written about this months ago on the expandeduniverse.com for my West End Games review series, but I'm way behind on doing that. We did do a live stream about, it's probably further back than I remember, maybe six months ago on the Imperial source book, but what I have here is the Rebel Alliance source book. Golly, it must be from like 1988, 89, and has the history of the creation of the Alliance. It has the military structure. It has like a sector, Atrevis sector, and then the rebel groups in it, ships. I mean, West End just did a fantastic job. It's got like, you know, the rank insignia, the uniforms, weapons, ground vehicles, everything. It's a fantastic reference book. And for those who don't know, when Timothy Zahn wrote the Heir to the Empire trilogy, he was sent a box of source books that were from West End so that he could kind of keep everything consistent and use the vehicles and all that. And he did. Uh, if you remember, um, toward the end of, I think it was, yeah, it was Heir to the Empire when they're on Mirker and they make it to what is, what was the name of that city? Like Hilliard city. There was like a chariot land speeder. There was a military land speeder used by the empire. He got it out of, out of the West end books, but it goes into the history of how Bail Organa and Mon Mothma had met about creating like a rebellion and all that stuff. It's the real lore guys. So get the rebel Alliance source book. It's pretty crazy. The price tag is still on here. $20 and that was it. I think I got it at Grapevine Comics and Cards in North Stockton, California at the time. So get that book. It's so cool to read stuff from that era because it puts you in that era and it gives you a different feeling and it helps you to compartmentalize the Disney Star Wars garbage from the real stuff. So make sure you get that better than this. Yeah, of course it's better than that. And Spice Girls lore. Um, autograph copy. Oh, Central Guide to Warfare. Who wrote that one? Central Guide to Warfare. Up, oh, Jason Fry. Now a uh, Disney collaborator, right? He wrote The Last Jedi novelization. Anyway, get the Rebel Alliance source book. It's awesome. I should do a live stream on it and go over the PDF on screen sometime. It'll be fun. But that's my recommendation. Go to eBay, wherever, and find you a copy. The bindings can be pretty messed up on these. This is the original first edition. Subsequent editions were softback and had a better binding, but I still have my first edition. So this was brought up earlier. Somebody was wanting this, so here we go. A couple of nights ago, somebody asked. Peter Vincent asked, have you heard of Firefly TV series and its film Serenity? And yeah, I have. I replied with the picture. I've got the whole series and I got the movie. Do I love the show? Not really. I think it's a good show and it's definitely worth watching, you know, a couple of times. I like the fact that they got a movie and got to kind of finish up the story and stuff. 
So check it out if you've never seen it. Not every episode is fantastic. I don't know. I have I have some problems with the universe, the world building and stuff, but the characters are good and it's it's pretty good storytelling, but it does kind of have that uh, Joss Whedon dialogue super fast, you know, cuts between people kind of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer style, but it's not bad at all. So check it out if you haven't seen it and get the movie too. Firefly and Serenity. That's the recommendation for the week. Speaking of science fiction though, you guys might have seen on X, I was watching more SG-1 on my Friday night fuel up. Not a good episode I watched tonight. Emancipation, but you got to get through them because a big project is coming up on SG-1 soon. Has a big cult following, big time. You saw the movie, but not the show, then get the show. You could find it used probably for 10 bucks. But can you afford a DVD player? That's the question. Yeah, get get Rebel Alliance Sourcebook, Mike. It's fun. All right. Um, this is something that Laura sent. Where did it go? Where did I save that? Ah, here it is. So we're going to take a little bit of a different approach this week. The simp of the week is... Nathaniel Pena. So Doomcock quote tweets culture crave and says, yeah, don't give a shit. Star Wars is dead. Nathaniel says, yep, same here. I'm with you, overlord. I'm not wasting my precious time watching woke galactic garbage, especially after George Lucas betrayed us all and spit in our faces. I mean, these people are cult worshippers is what they are. Like Doomcock, simps are the worst. And that guy wins this one. Big time. I'm still having a hard time though picking spacing of the week. It's so there's so many options there. Gosh, I don't know. Just don't know who is spacing of the week this week. <sighs> I think I know who it is. Let me find this. I should have screenshotted this earlier, but nevertheless, I didn't. These guys live on social media, so it's hard to find stuff. Um, let's see.
Damn it. Yeah, here it is. So you got Mesa Windu. Probably being trolled by some fake white supremacist account. And then he retweets Jinx at Hatterak. The prequel Jedi Council has like one white guy. Because this Libertas, in my opinion, trolling white supremacist account says you will never understand Star Wars because you are black. Star Wars was made by and for white people. Star Wars is white culture. The prequel Council Jedi has like one white guy, uh, Mesa Windu's buddy says. So th these Spurgs out there, these Spurg accounts don't even understand when they're being trolled. It happens to me all the time. I click on it and I put mute account. So I don't ever have to read that crap. You don't block them. You don't reply to them unless you want to just have some fun. Mesa Windu's a piece of garbage, man. Total piece of garbage. Palestine simp and everything else. I don't know. This might be his third or fourth spacing of the week. Everything is about race with this guy, like everything. And the reason is that that culture is taught victimhood from birth. I guarantee his mama taught him that he has a worse life ever due to the way that he was born. Instead of taking personal responsibility, tired of him, he's gone. Shut the dough, shut the dough, hit the button, watch them go. You ain't base, you ain't base. Here's a quick ticket to get space. We chillin' up in the bank room, you floating through the vacuum. Time to end this session, let it at your explosive decompression. He go. Real Kim Shady member for eight months. I haven't seen Mesa Windu go more than 24 hours without complaining about race. Palestine. Make sure you put those quotations around the fake country. Our side of Star Wars fans constantly on Twitter. Yeah, because he's a Spurg retard piece of garbage. And again, like we try to like take it easy. Like on the retards, but at the end of the day, if no one's going to control the retards, then we have to control the retards. It's the way that it is. Nuisance Bird's in the house. What is going on? Thanks for watching the replay. Jorge Lucas is here. I can't believe Jorge betrayed us. We've been betrayed, guys. We weren't betrayed in 2015, but we are now. At the end of the day, guys... I don't like what George did. I don't like a lot of stuff he's done personally, but at the end of the day, the Star Wars he made was good. I don't expect Star Wars to ever get good. I never have since I got into the game back in 2020. But what I do like, I like. And him saying that and doing that isn't going to change that. Don't forget the quotation marks. Darth Ghostface. Blue-eyed Scorpio, never trust a man that walks around with four chins. Yeah, um, there's a great line from Babylon 5 where Ivanova says, uh, I almost know this by heart. They said, uh, who are you going to vote for? Because there was a presidential election coming up for the Earth Alliance and she says, I think I will vote for Marie Crane. I do not like Santiago. I always believed that a leader should have a strong chin. Santiago uh, has several of them. Um, and I, I uh, 
for me, I think this is a, a bad sign or something like that. It's just a great line. I don't think they ever showed Santiago because he was, well, I don't want to give it away. If you've never seen it. Watch Babylon 5, guys. It's awesome. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, we can do this. And then we can spend a few minutes on some uh, Q&A. Here we go. The moment you've been waiting. All right. You guys like uh, A New Hope, Leia? Well, if you do... You're in luck. I got this going on. Uh, let's see. Misty Gates. So shout out to Misty Gates for having such a fine booty. She's got the sporting blaster there. The defender model. And that's according to lore. And for all we know, the G-string is according to lore, right? Because we don't know what Leia had on under that, right? In the storyline, the rumors are that uh, in real life, in the production, there was duct tape under that outfit. Yep, there it is. The Empire's ass. I'm giving you something you guys can't get anywhere else on this channel. But check her out. Misty Gates was her name. Um, I'm sure a very nice young lady. All right. So that's what we have going on. Uh, any questions tonight, guys? And again, Justin, don't forget the quotation marks. Palestine was never a country, just like Babylon wasn't a country. They were different civilizations during biblical times. Yeah, exactly. And even if they were a country, who cares? Uh, it's a decrepit culture and it deserves to be destroyed and absorbed into Western values. Yeah, so, got a few minutes for some Q&A. Do you guys have any questions at all? Fielding some questions here. You had no characters left. Oh, got it. You ran out. Okay. Yeah, fake country. Carpet bomb it and start over again. Source material history is important to adhere to. Yeah. Yep, there you go. That's how you do it. Oh, sorry, Stizo. When was that? Shit, sorry, dude. Twenty twenty dollars two hours ago. I gotta start checking that more often. I totally apologize. $20 from Stizo for Life. Let's screenshot that. We can throw it up here. I think we are long overdue for a member's community stream. Here is some funds for chips and dips. Happy 93rd birth. Yeah, that's right. The chat is 93. Um, he's 93. He looks... I'd say 73, but probably 63, and he behaves like he's, I'd say 43. Just insane. Yeah, we'll have to figure out, even if it's not like a, a panel stream, like I was actually thinking, coincidentally, as I was taking a piss earlier tonight before the stream, that I could at least do like a members only stream where we just like chill out and stuff you know what i mean 
I just got to find the time. Once I get into this new role at work and see how things shake out, I think I'll be working fewer hours eventually once I kind of settle into the role. We'll have to see what happens, but that's one of the main drivers other than new other than more money that I accepted the role. So definitely have been thinking about that. We need to get it done for sure. Yeah, he is. He's always killing it. For life. Read the Holy Bible. Yeah. I got a King James version over here in the library. In my opinion, the only version you should read in English. And thanks again. Thanks again for the donation. We got to play something for that. What have we not played in a long time? Um, we can play the Cameron and JJ dance here. <laughs> Sparrow, 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 Lens flares. Thanks, Tizo. Appreciate you. Yep, KJV only. Agreed. The rumbling. Got it. There's all the Sparrow. The great Darth Melvin. Silver Ogre says, There are more than two options. Claiming anyone must support A or else must support B as a trap. Yeah, exactly. There's always none of the above. Brewster's Millions. The music of your people. Yeah. Polka, right? Dude, I used to, in California, you know, a couple of my ex-girlfriends, Mexican descent, you go to those, like, wedding parties? Shit. I mean, just tons of food. These one guys were rolling around these barrels full of, like, ten different kinds of beer, and they're like, oh, yeah, here's a beer. I'm like, oh, I'm not done with this one yet. Oh, I'll take it anyway, and here's another plate of beans and rice and carne asada and and you'd have like a cover band doing like Selena and they actually sound like it and stuff. I mean, just freaking fun, man. Them Mexicans know how to potty. You danced at Civil War reenactments. That's interesting. What's funny, whenever I went to the uh, Bass Reeves annual convention, wearing this hat, by the way, uh, and the rest of my costume, I was mistaken for one of the reenactors because what they do is they take you on a bus tour around Muskogee, Oklahoma, and they reenact a bunch of stuff that happened to Bass Reeves. And the lady's like, oh, no, you need to come over here. And I'm like, why? And she's like, oh, you're not one of the reenactors? I'm like, nah, because my outfit looks so good. So big fan of the Wild West, guys, because I'm from the Wild West, Northern California. Stockton, at one point in the late 1800s, was the only place that 49ers, the miners, could go to get a brothel, a bar, and a casino. So it was an outlaw town. Love the Wild West. Big fan of it. True West is the based Wild West magazine. The rest of them are woke shit rags. Like Cowboys and Indians. Horrible production. Horrible publication. 
All right, guys. Let's start wrapping it up here. Um, I'm going to try and take it easy this weekend a little bit. I'm going to build a fire pit, take a shower, come upstairs, work on the creative project. I need to get the website going. But you guys, I'm telling you, you're going to love this. It's going to be um, several different forms of media. It'll be novel format. It will be audiobook read by me. It'll be some source book type of material. Hoping to do some kind of comic style production. And it will all have continuity. Characters you care about. Stories you care about. It'll have values that don't hit you over the head. Like Gallagher with his hammer and a watermelon. It'll all be smart and unintrusive. So I'm going to come upstairs and work on that this weekend. Yeah, no live action trailers. If we do, it'll be like a, a spoof and a joke. There will not be uh, Satanists involved either. I can tell you guys that much, I promise. But anyways, awesome show tonight. We've been going one hour, 42 minutes. I love doing the spacing. Love having you guys here. Love the replay, people. If you're watching on replay, like if you're Star Wars Scran across the pond, appreciate you. You know, the jack of all casuals of the world, fractured filters. We love the replays. Tell friends that we're here to spread the truth, have fun, and give you the information. That's what we try to do here. But I'll see you guys next week, Friday night, 10.05 Central, p.m. on The Spacing. Thank you so much for being here. See you later. You. A lot of people make jokes about spacing somebody, about shoving somebody out an airlock. I don't think it's funny. <laughs>